What's up, CoderBite? Welcome back to another Data Structures and Algorithms video. I'm Elizabeth, and today I think this is going to be our last video in our Back to Basics series. This series was sort of an experiment to just try and see if we could jump straight into the problem without any lessons to begin with, um, just solve the problem in real time, try and figure it out together, and then kind of walk through how I did it at the end. Uh, for next series, I am very open to suggestions. Uh, some of our ideas are maybe a series about front end frameworks. We could do a little bit of an intro to some of the popular ones like React or Vue. Um, we could do something in the, you know, cryptocurrency realm, maybe developing smart contracts on the Ethereum network, which would be super cool. Um, yeah, but we are open to suggestions from you guys. So please, if you have anything that you want us to make a series on, leave it in the comments below and we will definitely take it into consideration. And with that, let's get into this week's problem. Given an array with all integers from one to n, except for one, write a function to return the missing integer. This can be done in O of n time complexity and O of one space complexity. Okay, so let's look at an example just to kind of illustrate what this is even talking about. So here are some examples. Uh, let's say we have an array here and we have in this array, all of the integers from one to 10, except for one of them, right? So I think looking at this um, just off the top of my head, I think five is missing and we have the rest of the integers, right? So we can see that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have nine integers because we have all of the integers except for one from one to 10, right? And some of the things to notice here are that the integers are not in order, right? They're, they're scrambled here. Um, let's just make sure that my eyesight is working. Yes, it is. So we are missing the integer five. So we are tasked to write a function to return the missing integer given an array of, you know, any length, uh, you know, in theory, we could have one to n, right? Any, any, um, any number of integers, there's always gonna be one missing and we can solve it in a constant space. So our function is not going to be generating any sort of values that are growing with the input size. So it doesn't matter that, you know, whether we have the integers from one to five or one to 500, our function is going to have constant space complexity and we are going to have linear uh, time complexity. So it's only going to grow with the input size linear, linearly, that's a great word. Um, so that's a big O of N. So yeah, let's get into it. Okay, as per usual, I have a Python file here open in PyCharm, and we can get started by defining our if dunder name equals dunder main, and we can call our function from here. So let's say um, we have a list, right? And these are our missing missing int list. And I'm just gonna copy and paste from the example that we saw on our slides. Um, but this is just, you know, all of the integers from one to 10, except for one, this one is missing five. And then we can call our function here. Um, we can call that, I don't know, find missing int. Seems like a good, good name to me, missing int. And we can print that also. We will probably wanna see that. Um, and then let's just define that up top. So find def find missing int, and that's going to take a list. And we can put a pass in there for now. Okay. So let's talk about kind of an approach here and um, how we want to find that missing integer. So. The problem said that we can solve this um, with a time complexity of big O of n and a space complexity of big O of one. But let's solve this naively first, and that's probably going to take up, you know, more space than constant space at first. And then we can kind of iterate on that just so we can kind of, you know, at least solve the problem some way before we get to that um, final, you know, desired state. So 
let's see, we have our list, right? So I think in Python, if we're just going to ignore that, you know, uh, space complexity requirement just off the bat, I think what we can do is we can create a set from the list passed in, and then we can create another set from, um, you know, the list not missing the integer, which we know how to do that because that will just be um, all the integers from one to the to the length of the list plus one because the one we got is missing an integer. We can just do for i in range, right? Um, so we get every single integer. And then we can take the difference between those two sets, which is kind of like a cool thing in Python that you can do. Um, and that will be the missing integer. So obviously that takes up space, right? Because we're going to have to make two different uh, sets that are uh, the first one being with all of the things, all of the integers in the list passed in, and then the second one being all of the integers in the list passed in plus the one that's missing. So that's not going to satisfy that requirement, but let's see what we get here and then we can build on that. So to do that, I think what I would want to do is I would say, let's say missing int set, right? So this is just going to be a set with, you know, just what we got passed in, right? So this is a set of all of the integers um, minus whatever integer is that wasn't included in that uh, set or in that list. So how would we make a, a set of integers uh, without including the missing integer, even though we don't know what it is yet? So I think for that, we can just do, I don't know, let's say int set, and we can do um, some sort of, you know, comprehension here. Um, and this is how you would, um, you know, put all of the things in the comprehension in a set. You just put it into with the curly braces. And then you can do for i, i for i in range, right? And then we want to start, start the range at 1. And then what do we want here? We want the stop of the range to be um, whatever the length of the list passed in is uh, plus one, right? Because the one that we got is missing an integer. So to get the actual range, all of the integers, we have to add one. And then I think we're gonna actually have to add a, another one. So it's going to be the length of the list plus two because in Python, the range, uh, the second parameter is not included in the range. So we want to iterate, you know, and include that last integer. So I think we're gonna to wanna to do uh, the length of the list plus two. So let's see here. So that's the length of the list plus two. And I think that should give us everything I, for uh, one to n, n being the length of, you know, the actual amount of integers, uh, and then plus whichever one is missing. Um, so now we have these two sets. One is missing an integer, one is a complete, has all the integers. So I think for Python, you can do something, you know, super clutch, and we can just say that the missing int is now the, you know, int set, the complete int set, difference dot difference and then we can just you know subtract from it essentially that missing in set and when that's going to leave us with a set of just the missing integer right so this is now going to be a set it's going to be a set of one we know that so i think because we just want to return that one we can you know something that you know I do in Python when I'm just looking for the thing, even though it's in a uh, data structure that's a list of things, but I know it's just the thing that I want. Um, you can just do an iterator and you can say an iterator over that missing int set. And then we can just return next, uh, which just basically, you know, calls, uh, you know, the next thing in the iterator. And if we just return after we do that one time, that will just be the one missing thing. Okay, so let's see what we get here. Let's uh, see what we get when we run this. And we get five, so that's great. So we have solved the problem, but what we've done is we have now um, 
used up, right? So this is a space complexity. Let's make a comment. Space complexity. That is a big O of N, right? Because we make a set for uh, everything in that list that we initially pass. Then we make another one, right? So let's say space complexity. And this is N again. Um, and then uh, in terms of time complexity, um, we are looping over these things every single time that we create these sets, right? So that's also big O of N, but that's okay, that's allowed. But the space complexity is problematic here. So what can we do to kind of not store so many things, right? What can we do to, I'm gonna get rid of this. What can we do to not store all of these kind of other, you know, data structures? So let's talk about some characteristics of a list of all integers and then a list of all of those integers minus one of them. So let's say we have, right, so here's our missing integers list, right? So let's say that our, you know, our not missing integer list, right, looks the same, except it has the five in it, right? So what could we do to compare these two lists that we can do without storing any, you know, data that's going to grow in terms of the input? So I think what that kind of with that requirement, I think what we can do is we can look at the sum of all of the integers. Because if we look at the sum of all of the integers, and then the sum of all of the integers with the one missing an integer, the difference between those two sums will be the missing integer, right? That's how, you know, that's how addition works. So, maybe if we just sum all of those integers without storing any of them and then subtract uh we would get our um we'd get our missing integer right so let's try that so let's say i'm going to rename this to be naive that's the our naive solution And let's take a look at what that would look like to do a sum. So find missing int, and we still get our list, right? Okay, so let's say, first of all, how do you get a sum, right? So that's easy, right? We can just do the missing sum, right? It's just a sum of the list, right? Very straightforward. And then for that non-missing, the one where there's nothing missing, we can still take that range, right? And we can say, uh, you know, you know, initialize some non-missing sum. And we can initialize that at zero. And from here, I think we can just do the same thing that we did above with that range. And we can say for I range one and then the length of the list plus two, right? Because we still want to go through that, but now we're not creating anything new. We're, you know, we're just storing a constant sum rather than, you know, something that grows with the length of the list. So we can just take that non-missing sum and then plus equals that i, right? And then that would be how we could um, kind of, uh, fulfill that space complexity that is constant because we are only ever creating one thing, which is that sum integer. Um, and in terms of uh, looping over the list to get that sum, that's allowed because we were allowed to have a big O of N for time complexity. Okay, so now we have a you know the missing sum and the non-missing sum. So I think what we can just do is then return the non-missing sum, right? Because that's going to be the bigger one, minus the missing sum. And I think that's going to be our missing, our missing uh, integer. So let's let's see if that actually does work. 
And it does, we still get five, so that's great. Okay, so we've solved the problem. Um, I did wanna point out that there is another solution to this, um, and that's taking advantage of uh, kind of um, the fact that this is every integer from one to n. And there is a formula um, which basically describes the sum of all the integers from one to n. And that is, um, Um, that the sum of any all the integers from 1 to n is always going to be n times n plus 1 and then over 2. And this is going to equal the sum of all ints from 1 to n. And so in case you have heard of this um, kind of formula for that, um, you, we can definitely use that in this, in this uh, problem here. So I can show you how to do that really quick. So let's say def find missing int formula. And that takes a list. And we would basically do the same thing, right? We would say that the um, uh, n here would be the, um, the length of the list plus one, right? That would be the um, kind of the, um, the, last p the last integer in our list of all the integers from one to n. So that's how, how we get n here. And then we would get the sum total which would be the, um, that would be where we do our kind of formula here. So that would be n times n plus one, and then um, uh, that's the division operator in Python where um, we can kind of uh, forget everything after the decimal point. So we just wanna get that whole number. So that's the sum total. So we don't even have to loop over every single integer. We can just plug all of the numbers into this, right? And then the thing that we do have to do is we will still have to sum over the, um, the list with that's missing the integer, right? But then we can just do the same thing as you know above. We can return that the sum total minus the sum of the list is going to be the number that we're looking for. But that saves us a little bit of computation because now, um, you know, the only um, O of N time complexity operation we're doing is the sum of the list with the missing integer. The, we don't have to do it again for the, um, the non-missing integer list because we can kind of use that formula and just get it uh, instantly. So I don't know that this is so much better than the, you know, the, the way we did it above, but it's you know impressive if you know this sort of thing if you just pull it out in an, in an interview. Um, so let's uh, let's uh, just make sure that that works here. So that's that, and we get five. So there you have it. Three ways to solve this uh, problem, and I think you know um, again it's not so such a difficult problem. Uh, the thing that makes it difficult is um, making sure that you're staying within the uh, time, com time constraints and space constraints. And yeah, that's it. That's it for uh, this week's problem and this back to basic series. I hope I didn't put you guys to sleep like I clearly have put my dog to sleep, but um, you know, I enjoyed this problem. It's like a little bit of a like, you know, a, a quickie. Uh, it's a nice little easy one. Um, so yeah, um, get excited for the next series, which I don't know what it will be that yet, but I'm sure it will be awesome. And if you have any requests, please comment below, let us know what you'd like to see. Uh, we're here to serve you guys. So I really hope you guys are doing well, practicing really hard for those interviews and see you next time. Bye.